Hello, and welcome to this last optional lab on normal distributions and, and how we can use them to sort of um, estimate what's going to happen in sports. All right, so the normal distribution is the bell curve that you've probably seen before in other math classes. Um, and it gives you an idea of how data is going to be distributed, all right? Now, this curve doesn't apply to everything, all right? Not everything in the world is normally distributed, but a good number of things are normally distributed, all right? Think about something like height, all right? What a normal distribution says is you're going to have the most people right around the average height, and then you're going to have a few people that end up being really, really tall on this part of the curve. And you're going to have a few people that end up really, really short on this side of the curve. All right? We can do the same sort of thing with statistics, all right? um, specifically sports statistics. So imagine something like batting average. All right? So let's say the average hitter hits like 260 or 270. You're going to have a lot of players close to that 260, 270 number. And then as you move to the right, you're going to have fewer and fewer players that have a much higher average. And you're going to have fewer and fewer players that have a much lower average. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, right now this is just kind of common sense. Yes, but the normal distribution um, is going to allow us to be a little more exact in our estimates. You know, instead of saying like, oh, I think, um, you know, more people are going to hit 270 than 300, we can say actually, well, I think 11% of people are going to be 300 or above, or I think 2% of people are going to be 230 or below. Um, and why there's no requirement that that happens, um, what we've seen is that this holds up pretty well. All right, and the estimates that we can get from using this curve um, hold up pretty well with what actually happens in reality. All right, so that's what we're going to look at is kind of how this curve can be used to sort of make estimates in sports. Now, this curve, we usually just think of it as one single curve, but it's actually a whole group of curves. All right, there are infinite number of normal distribution curves. Um, and they are defined by two numbers, all right? They're defined by the average of your data, and they're defined by the standard deviation of your data. So those two numbers can generate an infinite number of curves, and then each curve can be used to analyze um, a specific situation. So if we go over to the spreadsheet that goes with this lab, um, there's a bunch of tabs. Uh, baseball, one of LeBron James's season, and then some football tabs. And again, to use a normal distribution, we're going to need the average. So what I've already done already on the baseball tab is calculate the average for all of our stats. So this is equals average, and then I highlighted the column, and then I dragged it across. And then I also needed the standard deviation for the tags. Uh, for the stats, so that's equal STDEV, left parenthesis, highlight everything, and then drag it across. Um, so as far as the players that I chose, um, that becomes somewhat of like an issue that you kind of have to like figure out and estimate. So I made the cutoff, the players had to have at least um, 400, uh, I think it was 400 at bats. Is that the at bat column? Yeah, 400 at bats. All right, so I made the cutoff 400 at bats. Now, 400 at bats is probably fine for things like batting average, um, on base percentage, slugging, OPS. Uh, if you're doing something like home runs or RBIs, you might actually even want to use a higher cutoff. Um, and the reason I say that is if you use if you're comparing players that have had 680 at bats um, to players that have 400 at bats, um, the players with less at bats are going to just drag some of your numbers down, drag some of your averages down, um, just because they've played fewer games. 
Again, we're not going to worry about that a ton for this activity, but you do kind of have to figure out like a cutoff if you're using counting stats, because if you include people that have only had like, you know, a hundred at bats, their values are going to bring your average way down, which may make your estimates um, less accurate. So anyways, I, I set it at 400. So first what I want to do is just kind of prove to you that this is relatively accurate. So based on the data that I have here, the average batting average was 269 and the standard deviation was 0.027. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this normal distribution calculator and I'm going to type in the mean, which was 0.269. I'm going to type in the standard deviation, which was 0.027. And I'm going to ask it if this is your mean and this is your standard deviation, which generates this curve, how many people would we expect to bat over 300, right? Based on this information that we have. All right. And if I hit recalculate, It'll tell me that based on where 300 is on this curve, we would expect about 12% of the hitters to bat 300 or above. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to this spreadsheet and let's see how many were actually 300 or above. So there's a nice little function called count if. So I'm going to count all of these but I'm only going to count them if they are greater than or equal to 300. Right? And it tells me that there are 21 that are greater than or equal to 300. There's 173 in total um, because that first, head, first row is actually the headings. So if I do 21, divided by 173, it works out to be 12%. All right, so this is 12.13. The estimate was 12.55, but you can see it is fairly accurate, all right? So what we can do is we can say, all right, if we assume that hitters next year average out to be the same as they were this year, we can start estimating the probabilities of certain events. So if we were to assume that hitters in baseball average 269 um, with a standard deviation of 0.027, we can say, all right, what are the odds that we're going to see a hitter that hits above 350? All right, so we could put this in here and say, all right, the odds of hitting above 350 are pretty tiny. But they could happen, and with a, an entire league of players, you might see one player hitting 350. Um, if you asked it, what are the odds of it being above 400? Um, this calculator shows is it zero. It's not technically zero, but it's it's really really tiny. So we can use this, and as long as we assume that these numbers stay roughly the same, we can start making estimates about next year and saying like, all right, based on this curve, and we just showed that the curve is relatively accurate, we can start, if we, if we say that these are going to stay the same, we can make assumptions about what's going to happen next year and what likelihood um, an event has of happening. All right. And that's, that's what the lab looks at a lot. Um, it's using old information to make predictions about what could happen in the future. So like the NFL tab takes and takes a look at rushing stats and then says, what are the odds of a 1500 yard rusher next year? Um, what are the odds of a running back scoring over 20 touchdowns? Um, this one talks about the single season passing record and then saying, you know, based on the passing game from last year, what are the odds we see somebody actually break that record in the coming season? So it gives us a chance to kind of like put some more concrete numbers on these things. And we have confidence that they're fairly accurate because we can test it, you know, the same way that we just tested this one and show that, yeah, the curve does reflect what's happening. Um, so we can use that to make predictions looking forward.
All right. The other thing that can you can use these curves for is you can kind of set like cutoffs. Um, and this is usually more on like the agent money side, but sometimes like contracts will include bonuses for like, oh, if you're in the top 5% of this, or if you're in the top 10% of this, you get, you get some sort of like contractual bonus or you get some sort of, you know, perk in your contract. Um, we can use these curves in reverse. All right. So the way we just use this curve is we said, all right, mean is 269, standard deviation is 027. What are the odds of being over 400? All right. We can also use it in reverse. All right. So let's bring up this one for a second. All right. So another calculator that you're going to use during the lab, and this one kind of goes in reverse and it says, all right, I still put in a mean. So if I put in my mean as 269 and I put in the standard deviation as uh, 0.027, I can then pick various areas and I can say, all right, what do I have to be to be in the top 10% of batting averages? All right. And this will tell me that to be in the top 10%, I have to hit 304. Um, if I want to say, all right, what if I want to be in the bottom 10%, not that you'd want to be in the bottom 10%, but that says that like 234 and lower is like you to likely to put you in the bottom um, ten percent of the league. If you wanted to say, like, all right, what if I, what if I get a bonus for being in the top one percent of the league? You know, what would that require? Um, and if I say above, then it would require like a three thirty average. All right, if you want to be one of the top one percent hitters um, in the league, at least according to to batting average. So you can use these curves in either direction. All right, you can either specify a value and saying, all right, if I specify this value. How much area does that take up? You know, if I say uh, 290, how much area does that take up? Or you can use it in reverse. You can say, all right, I'm going to specify the area. What value goes with that specific area? Um, so they can they can work in either direction, um, and that's what this question is going to be looking at right here. You're going to figure out like what it takes to be in the top 10% of passers. Um, or in the bottom 10% of passers. So again, you'll use both of these. Um, the links are there. So just another thing to kind of consider, another way to sort of apply um, statistics to the world of sports. Again, this lab is optional, um, but if it's something that interests you, feel free to, to go through it. And then as always, I can answer any questions or just help you along with it. All right, I hope this was helpful and have a great day. Bye.